All right, welcome. Um, we're going to have our first demo in mark making for watercolor. Um, we're studying this through abstraction right now. Um, and we're working on some little mini paintings. So that would be normally like half size um, of like a <clears throat> notebook size, 8 by 10, 9 by 12, about a half size sheet. You could go a fourth size, but honestly, in painting, sometimes actually smaller is harder, so we don't want to make this too hard on ourselves. Uh, the very first thing we should do um, when using watercolor is tape off our paper so it prevents buckling. I'm sure you've painted on paper before and had it kind of crunkle up and warp, and this helps with that. We'll do, and so will Blue Painter's Tape. Both have some problems, and if you've ever gone to pull off tape and had your your paper tear, you probably have encountered this. So one like old technique, I guess, is to sort of get the lint, a little bit of lint on, I'm just gonna use my art case, but your jeans, hoodie, any kind of fabric that has lint on it will do. If you just sort of de, I don't know, get a little bit of lint on there, um, <clears throat> then that usually helps with that problem. Not 100% of the time, we'll still talk about being careful when we take tape off later. But, so first we're just going to tape this down. So the first technique we're going to learn is washes. Um, and this is used in a lot of places, and not just abstract art either. But it is very nice to kind of prepare the ground, sort of have a nice surface that's not just plain white to start your painting on. So you'll need water. Um, I never do watercolor without some kind of paper towels around me, just in case I hate it. It's, it's your eraser. And I do prefer a larger brush for washes, just because it gets a lot of paint on there. We're not doing any details. You can do a wash with, with any brush, but... Um, this is my preferred. I'll use I'll use the round because I'm sure you have one of those too. Um, I kind of like to either do colors next to each other or opposites, and we can do one of each and kind of talk about why. Um, this is going to be a wet on wet technique, so that means you just get your canvas wet before you put any paint on, and that kind of helps the paint sort of with basically a lack of mark making, no lines, no brush strokes. I'm doing it kind of randomly because I want a little variety there which is sort of our focus, right? Um, feeling. And then one of the artists we were studying in our intro to abstract art was um, Helen Frank Frankenthaler. She, um, was very into washes, although she didn't use brushes at all. She um, she sort of spilled the paint, I guess, on there. She called them. Um, why is that? Um, All right, so I'm gonna kind of combine these two colors now. Um, I could either do that here, or even I could re-wetten um, the green part and just add some little kind of random splashes of yellow. Um, one kind of good rule in art is if you do something one place, if I have yellow here, I should maybe have it in three places to kind of make it uh, give it harmony, so it's like a repetition, so one, two, three. Um, but I can also kind of blend these colors together here, make a sort of secondary color. Maybe I'll just leave a little bit of white. And one thing that I think a lot of watercolor beginners struggle with is sort of the patience, I guess, of waiting for this wash to dry before you start painting on it. Um, since I added some dark green, I think I'll follow my rule again and do that in, I got one, two, maybe a third 
dark green field down here. And then we're just gonna chill. We're gonna let that dry for for a while. Um, if you've got like an air dryer, you can dry it pretty quick or um, put it outside on a hot day. But for our purposes, we're just gonna set it aside and start with um, another painting that I did earlier. So this is kind of that same same idea, but it's um, but it's dry. So now we can now that the wash is dry, our sort of our wet on wet, it's called sometimes. Um, we can kind of start to to do some other things in dry brushing. So usually for for a, an object, especially a geometric one. I would use a much smaller brush. Um, you can use the side of a flat brush. This is nice because it has basically two brushes here, right? You've got the skinny surface and the fat surface, so you can make skinny lines and fatter lines. These are really nice. So I'll probably stick to these, these two, um, just to keep it simple. So I'm going to kind of contrast this lightness. I'm going to do a darker color now. And that kind of brings us to a topic called translucency. In Watercolor is translucent, which basically means see-through, right? I can still see the white of the paper behind behind this paper. And um, <clears throat> that's the difference between watercolor versus acrylic and oils, which are opaque. You can't see through them as well. So what's kind of nice about watercolor paintings is you can build them up in layers and kind of see the richness, see the previous, the previous layers. So I'm just going to really quickly... Thinking back to those shapes, I'm just going to break this mug into geometric simple shapes, right? I'm not really even going for realism here. This is abstraction. So I'm just thinking of the essential form. Um, I'm actually going to try and focus on getting a, a cup in here in as few lines as possible. Sometimes I'll have a little test piece of paper nearby just to kind of see if I have... Oh, see? I thought I was using the... <laughs> The purple and it's blue so there you go i mean i could use blue but i was going for purple so hey great example of why to use a little test sheet right in fact sometimes i'll kind of like dry the brush off a little bit and really just try to load as much paint on there as i can okay. so we're talking about a circle not even a perfect one kind of abstracted, right? We said kind of a rectangle-y round. I'm not sure what happened there. My camera kind of glitched out while I was filming. So <laughs> anyways, I went from painting the mug with this brush, dry brushing, to using my um, flat brush just so I could have a little variety. So my mug was kind of simple, but had some nice thick lines and thin lines since we're going sort of the focus here is variety in our mark making. So now we're going to think back to those abstract artworks we viewed that had a lot of repeated pattern and line work. For our our mug series, each one needs to have three repeated patterns and line work. I think for inside the mug, I'm going to demo um, something I forgot to demo when we were initially studying wet on wet, which is scumbling. That's just kind of doing wet on wet and then sort of mopping it up a little to make the surface have a little more variety and be a little more interesting. All right, the last couple of things I wanted to go over today are um, <clears throat> contour line drawing. 
which would be another way to get that, like the mug's form on there initially. Um, not using dry brushing, but using an actual dry medium, which would be, uh, you know, a drawing medium, pencil, pen. I'm going to use Sharpie because it is permanent and it won't bleed later on. I have a thick Sharpie and a, and a fine point Sharpie. So a continuous line drawing is just something where I'm also sort of gesturing the mug. I'm... I'm not too worried about detail, I'm just doing the basic outline, so the outside shape of the mug. And for I'm gonna double back over there. Really not worried with like perfection here. I'm just trying to get like the essence of this mug. I'm gonna color that in. Alright, now I have kind of a, a derpy little mug to paint in. Um, <clears throat> which is fun, right? This is it's supposed to be not exactly perfect or reality. Um, I, I kind of made some thick and some thin lines, so I don't necessarily need to come back in and, and add any, but I could, right? I could say, I could add patterns, right, with this. I could say, I could be looking at this mug, saying, oh, there's these little lines that straight through it. So maybe just sort of for that essence of a mug thing, I'll just stripe a few lines. And now I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone, because I have... A variety of thickness and thinness of lines and since I sort of striped my mug I already have a repeated pattern I only need two more to make this fit our qualifications so <clears throat> I could you know put in a wash now what's nice about the sharpie is it's gonna stay there it's not gonna the paint the water won't mess it up um, but there is one last technique I did want to talk about maybe we'll do the background here which would be recycling paintings that you don't like maybe you practiced a bunch of mark making on a piece of paper first. But this could be seen as a repeated pattern in some cases, right? Or maybe you have another painting you don't like. I, I did this quick study the other day, and um, speaking of how to tape stuff down, right? Pulled some of my painting off. But I can see there's some interesting re repetitions here. And one of those artists that you looked at, Lee Krasner, she worked very much in collage. I could take that down. I have one pattern, two pattern. Now I just have to come in and paint a third pattern. I could continue this collage thing with maybe like a piece of cardboard, right? I could have brown and neutral or um, any number of things. So maybe I won't torture you. Maybe I won't, won't make you watch me finish this. I'll finish it. I'll, I'll post a picture. So that's basically it for our first few techniques in abstraction. All right, so I was glad that I mentioned um, collage because I ended up hating my demo piece so bad that I, I collaged it onto my other prepared grounds. So, yay. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's nice not to have to make garbage out of something you didn't, you didn't like. So all three of these paintings would meet our um, qualifications for this practice activity. I'm I'm not looking for three amazing works of art, although they could be, right? Uh, you know, these probably aren't my favorite pieces. I probably won't hang them, but I learned, well, hopefully you learned a lot um, and had some practice along the way. So um, let's see. Three repeated patterns, right? So on this mug, and you should be able to point out this on your own work. So on one of your slides, I'd like you to label three repeated patterns the orange marks coming out of the mug, right? It has repetition because it's a similar brush stroke, but it has variety because it changes tone, it gets lighter, it's darker, it changes size, they're not all exactly the same. So I've got a repeated pattern here. I've got multiple repeated patterns in my mug, right? The stripes, the pattern here. I threw some stripes in here and on the handle. And then I also made some varying thickness of lines on the uh, on the table on which it's sitting, right? This could be a, who knows, maybe it's a tablecloth. We've got thick red lines and thin red lines. There's definitely a lot of variety in these washes. Um, so this piece would definitely meet. And I think you can probably pick these other ones apart and see that there are three repeated patterns of shape or mark making in, 
in all three of them. In fact, I even did a fourth, and um, you could as well, for it to go above and beyond. I, I do like this one a lot because there's, you can see quite a bit of the translucency of the paint. You can see that I started with very different colors in here. Now those yellows are just peeking out as highlights. Then I made blue mark making, and then I put black mark making on top, so there's a lot of depth there. So, um, I hope this was helpful, and have fun making your three practice paintings.